What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to take an object that you've imported and add it to your user library for future access inside of twin motion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to export a model from SketchUp and then import it into twin motion. And then I wanna teach you how to add it to your user library so that it will actually be in your uh, list of objects that you can import in future renderings. So to start off, this is a model I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. So it's the sports car Porsche by Antics. So if you want, you can download this and then uh, follow along that way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this component and I'm going to save it so that I can import it into twin motion. And so I've got my model all ready to go. So this is the school model by Max Achofsky. And uh, I just wanna bring in this car and place it right here. So in order to do that, to, to import an external car or an external model, we're gonna go down here to import. And we're gonna click on this button right here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find our file by clicking on open. So in this case, I'll double click on my sports car Porsche. And then the one thing I like to do is I, I like to keep the hierarchy in the model. So that'll keep all of the hierarchy of the different groups and components inside of the SketchUp model rather than merging everything by material. Then I'm also going to check the box for fix UV and texture and click OK. And so what that's going to do is that's going to bring this into twin motion. And one thing I don't like about the way that it does this is it just kind of drops it wherever. So I think generally it's been dropping things off in the distance over here, but you can find it by going over into your object list and just clicking on it. And you can see how that'll bring up your, uh, your little 3D gizmo. And uh, then you can use that to drag this over here, but it's a little bit frustrating that it doesn't drop it based on where your camera is. But what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this car in so we'll bring that in right over here we'll drag it up a little bit we'll move it over and we'll go ahead and we'll rotate it 90 degrees as well and so we're gonna place this right here and we're gonna take a look at the car so you can see how that car model gets brought in and um, what I want to do first is I just want to swap out some materials because we're not getting a whole lot of realism off of this like there's not a lot of uh, like light reflecting or anything like that so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna swap out some materials just by using our material picker So we'll probably swap out this white material with like a glossy plastic and we'll change the color back to white for right now. And then we'll also swap out a chrome color on our wheels or a chrome material. It doesn't necessarily like that, so... Maybe we'll just leave that as is for this... Uh, for this tutorial. So maybe we'll swap out a different glass material. Maybe a tinted glass material on our glass just like this. So something like this just to kind of get your car ready and uh, kind of get it to look the way that you want it to look. So then you have kind of a glossy color on your car. Well now let's say that you have your car just the way that you want it to be. Well what you can do is you can right click on this object over here in your outliner list. So this is your list of all your different things in your in your uh, rendering, well, we can right click on this car and go over here and click on the button for add to user library. And so what that means is if we add that to our user library, we can actually go up into our library and click on user library and that model will now show up in there for use later. And so what that means is now, if we were to open a new model, this would show up and be ready for us to just drag in. So you can see how I could drag this in over here. And so one thing that you might want to think about doing is keeping this organized. So like for example, I have a I have a folder in here right now for context models. So that's where I keep the different models that I bring in here. And you can add a new one just by clicking on the plus button and then um, right clicking on this and clicking on rename. And in this situation we would call this folder cars. So you can create a custom folder inside your user library. Well then you would just drag this into your context folders folder and into your car library. And so what that means is now you can drag that into whatever model you want. So let's say for example that I had a new scene 
and I wanted to bring this car in that way, I could just click and drag this and bring this in. So now that's ready for you to access at any point. So you can use this to build out a library of trees or context models or really anything inside of Twinmotion really quickly. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you find this helpful? What else would you like to learn about Twin Motion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.